Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In this episode, we are continuing our journey into Bill 20 that was tabled last week by Minister of Municipal Affairs, the Honourable Rick McIver. In today's episode, we're sitting down with Councillor Ben Fideyev of the Municipal District of Bonneville. We're going to be talking about his re initial reactions to the bill and how he sees this bill in light of provincial municipal relations. This is Municipal Affairs. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Um, I want to get uh, start by asking you your initial reactions to the proposed Bill 20 that Minister Rick McIver tabled uh, last Thursday. From your standpoint, was it good? Was it bad? Or what was your initial thoughts? I was quite confused by it. And I didn't really know uh, what angle they were, like they were applying. Because, they, you know, as a... With the MGA, they have a lot of power over municipalities already. Uh, it, is, it is very clear that we are children of the province. Uh, so, you know, I, I and I really don't know their their methodology of where they're going with this. Uh, I, you know, I also mentioned I talked to a uh, local paper and I said, if there's a few bad actors that are giving them issues, uh, why not deal with those versus going to a blanketed uh, type of bill? Um, you know, we see them. Uh, come out in the past with where some municipalities have you know overreached uh, some of the stuff and and you know the province has come in and kind of you know uh, corrected their path right so you know they've done it in the past and why why this bill like it, and and what's you know we as municipalities have been asked for a long time about this bill we kind of heard chatter and, and things like that and and this is the first time ever that I've seen Alberta munis and the rural municipalities of Alberta uh, be united in a voice of, we don't like this. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, again, there's some sort of consultation done. Uh, they received the information. I believe it was 70% of people said no, uh, but they said, thank you for that and went on their merry way and came up with Bill 20. So I'm going to I'm going to play a little bit devil's advocate uh, if you don't mind for a few seconds because you talk as about that 70% well. as I, as I do as I try to do very well <laughs> let's put it that way um you say that 70% and now we're at bill 20 now that 70% was strictly around political parties into municipal elections this trial run Correct. is just for Edmonton and Calgary so the MD of Bonneville which you represent as the councillor will not be uh, test piloting political parties uh, are you concerned that this first step is just them trying to work around and by 2032, whenever the next next election is, we might see political parties in the MD of Bonneville. Absolutely. Uh, why you know why make us why make us special? You know, I mean, it's it's not only it's not only us, but you have you know your mid cities that are there involved. I mean, it's it's all going to be you know this is the example. The example is Edmonton and Calgary. It's going to come down to uh, you know the you know like the mid cities. That's going to be, you know, the left bridge and medicine hat. So you're going to see the red deers. So you're going to see the the coal lakes, and and then we're we're right next, you know. So I uh, I believe they are they're going to use this as a, as a test bed and see how it goes, and uh, and go from there. I mean, we've just the other day I read that there's a you know new parties starting up, uh, and and it's especially in in in, uh, in I think it's called trade YEG something like that. There's there's a new party coming in, right? So. You know, their ideas, they, they want to have seven or nine candidates for, uh, for Edmonton. I mean, it's uh, it's it's totally grab, grabbing the democratic process and throwing it upside down. Now, what would you say to the the so I had Minister McIver on the show, as you know, uh, and yeah. he, he came right. on the show and he talked about this is not new. Political parties are already there. They're just putting a label to it. From someone from a political background who is now an elected official, would you agree with that sentiment, or would you? How would you challenge the minister on that sentiment? Yeah. So the minister says, "If walks like duck, looks like a duck, must be a duck." Uh, in my political, uh, you know, running, I never represented a party. I have my strong views, uh, you know, but we've always we're all. You know, we're always grassroots. Uh, I, you know, I have family down in England. 
uh, they, you know, they they have the political parties that are in power there. As far as what did it, what did they do for the people there? Uh, the comments aren't very well because they they have to fly the colors now. Now they have to, you know, do what the party tells them to do. You know, we we still have to keep our MLAs accountable. We have to keep our province accountable. And and when you're when you're flying the same color, uh, how how can you keep the province uh, accountable? And maybe accountable is too strong of a word. Uh, they don't know what we do, right? They they don't know what you know. Uh, they don't know our weeds. You know we you know there's a lot of things going on that they don't see the issues we have. And I think once you grab the and put it towards the party, I think it's 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 not it's going to be a recipe for disaster so one of the big things that i i've seen from municipalities across alberta over the last well, literally a week because it was a week ago as of recording this interview that the minister tabled bill 20 one of the big concerns was around the bylaw changes that the province would be able to step in and actually unilaterally amend or repeal a bylaw that a municipality has passed. Now, since then, since their conversations with Minister McIver, they have come out saying it's only going to be used under super, uh, like very special occasions when the municipality oversteps its jurisdiction and goes into the municipal jur- or the provincial jurisdiction around healthcare, education, right. so on and so forth forth while we can talk about the the jurisdictions which we do a lot on my show i gotta ask are you concerned that there could be there could be moments when the province does step in when that line is sort of blurred between what is municipal and what is provincial around bylaws that you pass i mean i i don't have a problem with that again you know we are children of problems we have to stay in our lane uh, that is, you know, hundred percent, and I I think some of that 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 lane is uh, look, that line is a little blurred, and that's where you know the reminder comes in. I have no concerns with the byline of it. Uh, you know, it's it's all. I mean, we are not into housing. We are not into healthcare. We are not into any of that stuff. And I think sometimes uh, some bigger municipalities that might be a little confusing, but on on a smaller municipality. Uh, we know our lane and I have no concerns about the bylaw end of it. Looking at the bill as a whole, what was the big concern that you had with it? You as counselor for the MD of Bonneville speaking as just yourself, was there any concern that you had looking at this bill in its entirety or was it just sort of a complete uh, sort of gray area for some good and some bad and some ugly parts of it? Yeah, there was there's there's a little bit of everything. I mean, they, you know, I'm, I mean, one of the best quotes I've heard was from RME president, and he pretty well nailed it on the line. He says, "Our members do so much for the province. We manage nearly all the roads and bridges, to make sure that the land and services are available for industrial development, prepare for and respond to natural disasters, and more. Much of what they do behind the scene goes unnoticed by the public and by the provincial government." Rural, rural municipal leaders are okay with that, but when the problems actively undermines the ability for our members to serve communities, uh, we you know we just we just can't sit back and take it. Uh, that really resonated uh, to me, and which is which is true. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of downloading from the province, and we've touched base on that. Now you know without ever even having a choice. The tabulation now is not done electronically. Now is now it's going to be done by by counting and by hand. And even even though you know McIver has had said that he's n- he's never heard of any issues about the electronic uh, end of it uh, being you know there was no issues at all with it. But yet you know they're going to take that away. Like based on who? Based on what? Uh, I. You, There's not a lot. Of, you, they, like all the stuff that they're kind of doing now, they can do with the MGA, the bylaws. I mean, they can they can come in and say, no, your mass bylaw is not acceptable. You're not you are not, you know, in 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 the AHS part of it. 
you know, you're not a doctor, you're not this, you know, so, and, and they have come in and corrected those things. They can still do that. So I, I don't know what, what or why they're trying to vent the wheel. I'm assuming since this is tabled, you've t- spoken to people on your council, you fellow councillors on the MD of Bonneville's council, and even potentially councillors from across uh, Alberta or even in your area up in North Eastern Ontario, Alberta, so yeah, yeah. across Alberta, not Ontario. I was just speaking to someone from Ontario this morning. I do apologize for that. But you've been talking to people from Northeastern Alberta, uh, whether they be municipal leaders or even uh, stakeholders or even residents. Are you hearing concerns in your neck of the province about this bill? Or is it... And I hate to say this because I, I truly think municipal politics is the closest to the people and it's the most important. But is this an issue that municipal leaders are only concerned about? Or are you hearing from residents about it's actually a concern to them as well? Uh, not a lot from the residents. I mean, it just, it's just it's very typical. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a problem until it relates to you. Uh, people go, you know, go on their day, day by day. They do their work. Uh, and, and, you know, but, but I, you know, but I have heard from my, you know, fellow neighboring council members, the cities and the towns, and, and some of their opinions are very strong in regards to this, you know, like, you know, one comment was, you know, it's an attack on democracy, on municipal democracy, pretty strong words. I mean, for, for any, for any uh, other council member to have those words, you know, I, I don't think personally it's, it, it's, it's an attack. I, I think they're, they're trying, but uh, I think I don't know where they got their information from of how to reinvent a wheel because some of the stuff we have ready in place. And, uh, I, you know, for me, I'm concerned about being the political party, uh, the money behind the party. Uh, you know, they can very well influence the person that is running uh, directly or indirectly. It might not, you know, they might, might not you know, the party might not sign them a check and say, you know, this check is for Ben for they have running, but the powers in behind, right? The, the, you know, you, you know, what it, it's just, I, and I think is it's, is, what's the good is, in this uh, bill from your standpoint? It got everybody involved. <laughs> it got everyone unified. I can tell you that. <laughs> it got everybody involved. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I understand what they want to say. They, they want to be open and transparent and see where the money is coming from, uh, you know, for influences. But, you know, as, as they said already, they know where it's coming from already. So what, what does it matter? Uh, like, I'm just, you know, when I ran, I had a budget. Uh, you know, this other person that I, it was, it was a previous, uh, previous run uh they had you know a company backing them you know they they over extended on 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 everything the bigger signs and every time i would put two signs up they would put four signs up you know and, and it just it went back and forth and that that showed me what a few extra dollars from an outside organization would do uh and i'm i'm afraid that the whole uh the whole basis of of municipal leadership and municipal, I guess, uh, part of it is going to be it's going to really really change. It's going to be a drastic change on municipal politics. Uh, is it going to be the right people running for the right jobs? Do you want to make a change, or are you or are you running because you have a big group behind you pushing you for the change? Are you just there as a as a puppet for the companies that are funding you. So while while political parties are not being introduced into the rural municipalities, or even as the minister as yep. Minister McIver would say, ninety seven percent of Albertans will ninety seven percent of municipalities will not be seeing political parties in name. Because I even asked him on the show, does that mean that political parties will still be able to run? Well, technically, he didn't answer the question, but he did say yes, because they're already there in previous conversations. Um, 
you talk about the financial aspect and I want to play in that sandbox for a second because this bill opens up corporate and union donations to municipal leaders in the amount of $5,000. Now, I have ran municipal uh, campaigns in Northern Alberta. I ran for myself. And I've never seen someone give a check to a candidate or a municipal leader in the amount of $5,000 in a smaller rural urban community. For people in Bonneville and the MD of Bonneville, are you expecting, because we're literally almost a year and a half away till the next election, you're going to see more and more businesses starting to back candidates and potentially putting their money behind candidates to run, even though they're not running on a political party uh, platform? Uh, I'm not really, I, I can't really say for sure, right? But I know if- But does if, it concern they, you? Does it concern you the amount of money that this allows into municipal oh. politics? Or is it leveling the playing field that if a business in Calgary wants to donate to your campaign next election, they can write you a check for $5,000 and just walk away and say, okay, now Ben is going to have to do what I asked him to do because I wrote him a $5,000 check. Yeah, but it's, there's, there's, also, there's also the- direct monetary amount and then the indirect money mm -hmm. right their indirect money is you know they can do uh you know say it's a uh, company x and company x has you know uh 800 people that are employed here and they can say this is you know our guy we 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 gave him a check for five thousand uh, dollars support our our guy so now also now you have 800 employees I'm not saying this is a fact, but it, their 800 employees could be, you know, knowing or unknowingly voting for you, not knowing what you stand for and 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 what, you know, they're, they're voting for you because their corporation stands behind you. Uh, Have you changed you your know, thoughts on Bill 20 since it's come out? Um. Uh, I think there's always news things that are coming out and it's always changing. And it's like, it's a, it's a moving dartboard right now. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, a lot of the things that the bill is representing is, are there already? One of the things I don't like again is, is the manual accounting because that's going to cost more dollars. Uh, it's not, it's not instant. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't I don't like uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the funding end of it. I don't like the unions being involved. I don't like, you know, all that stuff. Uh, it adds. Right. So you by, by the time you grab this couple, three, four little different things. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty straightforward. There's one area that I do want to ask you about, and I'm not, I'm only asking you this because I, I've asked a few other municipal leaders as well, this exact same question. The one thing that I found good in this, but I found it quite interesting in bill 20 was that it allows the municipality to ask candidates for a police background check. Now, this is out of response of what happened in downtown Calgary in Ward 4 in the last municipal election. Things came out and the candidate was successful, uh, Councillor Sean Chu. Uh, but they say if this had been known prior, maybe he would not have won. Hindsight is 50-50 and we can always look back and say, well, what if it was there? What is your opinion on requiring candidates to ask for police background checks prior to be putting on the ballot because in canada this would be 100%. a first yeah this but this would be a first because you're basically telling people like okay i've gotten a speeding ticket should people know that i've gotten three speeding tickets in moose jaw saskatchewan i'm saying that because i literally just got a photo radar ticket from moose jaw saskatchewan for doing 90 in an 80 zone but <laughs> that is not the case should is this being too transparent when, hypothetically, if you were charged and you were proven guilty and you do your time and things happen and you come out the other side and you're a reformed person, should the sins of a past reflect the person who you are today? Uh, I mean, you're you're like you're assuming they're from the past. 
uh, that, you know what I mean? And, and that's and that and as as the thing, you know, should you know should there be you know you know forgiveness and and you know person change all the time, hundred percent. But if you know, I think still, I mean, we do it for other things. Like if you want to join a certain committee, if you want to join uh, like a like a leadership group that has kids involved, you know, you're you're always asked for those things anyway, and and people go, okay, uh, sounds good. You know, he's he's not a charged, you know, for this one instant, you know, was uh, working with with youth. You know, you get they're looking for you know for pedophiles. They're you know right, okay. It's it's passed. I mean, is a DUI? Is I mean, those are all. Is a criminal charge? Is there a harassment? Charge? I mean, I think it says someone to their character. Uh, I, so yeah, you're in favor. I, I you're in favor. You're you're in favor 100%. of that change. Do you yeah, think? Do you yeah, would, would would you be in favor? Because this this is up to the municipalities. Would you be up? Would you be in favor of the MD at Bonneville putting that into uh, into the works prior to the next uh, municipal election? I would be. Uh, okay. Again, it's it's one of those things where, you know, unfortunately, I'm just one out of seven. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, and, but no. I mean, I, I, I <laughs> but I, you know, but I do, you know, definitely do think that uh, it is. Uh, it just tells you the kind of character that person could be or is that is, uh, you know, understanding tickets. I, yeah. I'm guilty. I'm like I said, I'm guilty of speeding as well, and I shouldn't be, but, but here it's, we are. It's, it's, it's the criminal end of it, right? It's, it's the criminal end of it. It is the, you know, you know, it, it, is there a fraud charge? Is there, you know, is there any like any of that stuff happening? And and here you are, you know, you are you are working with with public money. Uh, you know, is there, you know, is there is there a buddy that's applying for something? And is there a track record? And uh, you know, like all that has. Uh, I guess has a play in and what's going on. So, so my final question to you, because I'm cautious of time, and I know you're a busy counselor and busy man, a busy business owner as well. But what's the one thing that you hope that this government does to potentially amend or even just remove this bylaw from ever existing, or this bill, I should say, from ever existing? What's the one thing you're looking at from Minister McIver or Premier Smith to say, okay, if they're serious about the concerns that they're hearing and I'm hearing in Bonneville and the MD of Bonneville and the surrounding area, um, they need to do this. What's the one thing you hope they take away from the last week from what everyone has seen on social media around Bill 20? I, yeah, thanks for that. I mean, I, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, to trust. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, let us, you know, trust trust us to do our job properly as municipal leaders you know we must feel safe in the i guess in the difficult decisions we always have to make uh when when you shadow when you, when you cast a shadow of doubt you know it 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 just changes the dynamic of council uh you know i mean and they don't and they don't know what's going on so i i think that is that is part of it this whole bill 20 seems like it is a trust issue uh and i mean we have the mga you know maybe if, if they uh, would follow the mga a little harder maybe we want to need this bill because most of everything that that is that is here is in the mga there's there's some new stuff right like the you know allowing for the like the donations that's not electronic voting that is not but all the other regulatory things you know are in the mga and like i said before you know we are children of province and we recognize that and we do want to provide a uh, a great service for the province and for our ratepayers and uh and and you know and i think uh that somewhat casts a shadow of uh of doubt to me Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. It's always a pleasure to sit down and chat with you. Like I said, I'm looking forward to coming up to Bonnie at the MD a li little, little bit later this spring. So thank you so much Very for taking good. time out of your busy schedule and doing this. Yeah, yeah. Please let us know so we can uh, schedule uh, you know, a lot of time for you and kind of show you uh, some of the area.
Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews with municipal leaders from across Canada or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, but most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.